homeless people, they're citizens have been disenfranchised and marginalized by the system. If you're not a millionaire in Austin, you're homeless. You're basically, <laughs> if you're renting, you're, you're considered transient under the law. Renting is transient under mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want us here. KLBJ has been pretty clear. There are DJs in the mornings and the afternoons that if you don't have hundreds and hundreds Thank of thousands you. of dollars, move along, get out of Austin, go ahead and leave. They don't want us here. And this is the, um, this is, this is a conservative approach to homelessness is leave. You're just too poor to be here. So we have citizens. We have 750,000 um, people in Austin approximately. And um, like many people have, if you look on the top of the hill, um, across the top, um, there are so many people. I guess I should be talking to a camera. Okay. Um, this is playing. I don't know which camera it is. But, um, <coughs> so, um, when it's completely blank. We don't have a homeless have problem. What we have is, is greedy. We have greedy. What? Most really of these people uh, that live in Austin oh. that have because he's dollars, basic. Uh, houses, oh. they've got 20 rooms to I'm spare. Writing on the letter you know, to go there's to really not a homeless problem. You've got... 10 to 20,000 homeless people, and you have 750,000 residents. Thank you. need to you. make space for our neighbors and citizens. We can't do that. Then we're going to sink money into, pro into different programs that um, that are going to basically make people the top rich. People, whoever gets involved in um, facilitating funding and programs like Ann Howard and Echo is going to be the one that banks, and those are the people are going to have the kingdoms and the money and at the end of the day they're going to ask for my money again in a few years and that's consistently what's happened nationwide and consistently what's happened in Austin um, we haven't been able to you know we've had 30 years of or more with P.L. Mm -hmm. Rodriguez and others 30 or more years of people doing um, activism for homeless people yet we have way more homeless people than we ever had so those people are actually failures if you look at their progress you would have to call them a complete failure and it's time to let new people in and get the other people that have been in out, basically. How many chances do you get? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. so, but tell us about the homeless that want to be homeless. Okay, you so, have a lot of people that don't want to be on the grid. They, mm -hmm. they want to do their own thing. They, want to, they don't want to be responsible or accountable mm -hmm. for anything they do. They may have some money in their pocket. <clears throat> they, that's the lifestyle they want. Mm -hmm. So what about them? Okay, so it's um, since before the Europeans landed on this soil, we had those kind of freedoms. We had the freedom to TP out and camp and move and migrate. Um, after Europeans conquered the soil, and nowadays we have lost those freedoms. There's nothing more American than being able to be off grid, camp out, uh, being free on the on the land that you own on public lands. The city council, however, has chosen to send the police goons in the middle of the night, all hours of the day. To come, um, even with the what do they call it? The um, the the light, the infrared cameras on the helicopter. They got a name for it. Um, it's like you know, hundred thousand dollar camera. They can find you in a tunnel. They can find you in a tent. They can find you under a tree, anywhere. And all they do is stalk and and, and spend billions of dollars tracking the homeless and stalking the homeless. Now, though, I say those people are free. And if you don't want to be in a home, you should have a right to not be in a home. If you want to live in a van, you should have a right to go live in a van by Walmart. You should have a right to put a camp, uh, a, a, a tent up. Well, the yuppies have a right. So yuppies are allowed to set up hammocks and tents in the green belt, and they're never given a problem. It's only the people that can't afford access to law that are targeted. And that's clearly discrimination. The way that um, the laws and ordinances are, maybe not the way they're written, but the way they're applied is, is discriminatory in nature. The majority of homeless in this town um, especially around the arch area, are African American, and it clearly shows uh, this discriminatory practice that fills up our jails with brown and black people. And I've been to jail several times, and I can tell you it's filled with brown and black people, most of whom are innocent of the particular charge that they had. They're just going through the process of a plea deal or whatever it is. It's just a system. It's not fair or just. That's amazing. To understand Travis County criminalizes homeless. Uh, and most of the city. And how is that? How does that come about? And, and what, what is it that they do in order? Is it, are they harassed or? Definitely. Um, we put the police in a bad position. Where the police tell me on my interview, yeah. <laughs> the, the police tell me in the interviews that um, that the city council is making them do. Now, when I miss, visit with Mayor, I mean, Manager Cronk and, and the other city council members' aides, 
they tell me that they're definitely trying to help the homeless and they wouldn't send the police. So we've got somebody's lying. Someone on one side or the other is lying. Um, I know the sheriffs and the constables in the county will go out into lands. I've seen them go and talk to homeless. I don't, I've heard varied stories whether they're like helping check on people, like a health and safety check, or they're stalking them. But definitely downtown and around the arch where the police and sheriffs tell you to go, if you're homeless, they say, get out of my, you know, it's like, um, mm -mm. like a shell game. You're in my block. Get off my block. Get out of my area. Mm -hmm. So they say, go to the arch where you're safe. Well, that's just a, that's a comp. That's just as bad. It's <laughs> worse because they'll, they'll, they'll criminalize everything you do down there. And then they'll follow you around in unmarked cars and vans, whole, whole bunch of groups of cops. And they'll still say, hey, Tyrone. You know, people tell, I'm a reporter, so people come and tell me, say like, hey, Tyrone, uh, for example, like, uh, I'm waiting for your warrant to drop, and there will be all these cops and, like, masks and everything in a car, and we just, oh, it hasn't dropped yet, and they keep coming back and coming back, so you're always on edge and scared, so they're definitely using, uh, using the, the criminal ordinances, statutes, uh, different things to just stalk the homeless mm -hmm. when it's just a shell game. If you put someone in jail, you just spent money. If you drive around all day harassing the homeless, you just spent money. The APD's budget, when they had their contract the last time, was about four to five hundred million dollars a year, and the majority of that was spent on homelessness, on, on, on tracking the homeless, not solving the forty thousand women that were raped and <coughs> their kids mm -hmm. got destroyed, not solving the yogurt shop murders, not mm -hmm. getting cops like Duster Hoff and creating accountability for rapists within the within mm -hmm. the police department and uh, sex sex and, and drug traffickers within the police department, murders and rapists in the police department. Um, they're not spending their money on the right things that you, you would think would keep us safe and protected. What they spend it on is the easiest target that they can do. The person that doesn't have access is the one that's going to be targeted. And he's got nothing. He's just going to be bargain. And he's going to get a court appointed attorney if he's, he or she is lucky. And that's not, that's, that's it's not American and not Austin. It really is. I'm an Austin native. Where are you from? I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. So I'm a Texas, native Texan. Oh. Kind of quick question. <laughs> you were starting to go into the numbers of the homeless. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this is something that recently came up to, come up to me. One of my customers came to me, and his face looked like hamburger. Apparently, he was walking down Congress, and I hate to say this, Gavino, but All a right. bunch of Mexicans came up and beat mm -hmm. him up, took his backpack, and took his grocery sack. Yeah. Okay, the I don't, I don't, yeah, they, they were in the ditch, they were, they were homeless, but they did speak English, none of them spoke English that he could hear, but then, you know, then, you know, you know, you can, I, that, that's not a big issue with me, but the criminal element, since we're a sanctuary city, the criminal element, how many of these, like, sanctuary city camps are there around with, like, this criminal element in them, do you know of any, or have you heard of anything like this? I know that you can't really talk about crimes when the people that you expect to be your law enforcers are committing worse crimes. Yeah, but I just was wondering if you've heard about any camps like this around. No, I don't even think we're a sanctuary city, according to Greg Abbott. I think he took that away under law. Well, they still think they're sanctuary city, so that, that's, that's something else. But anyways, I was just wondering so about this. Brown, we have brown skin, and we don't want to be ID well, I'm skin just, color. I'm just, yeah, yeah well, so I'm red under these lights. What color? Oh, look, he's red, too, so we're all red. We also can't um, put everybody in the same bucket. Just because yeah. a group of people does something doesn't mean that another group of people would do something. Just because they beat somebody up doesn't mean Gavino and I would beat somebody oh, up. I'm, oh, I understand that, but I was just wondering if, you, if, you don't, if, you, if you've seen that, like, like me, I have that more you or <coughs> heard of anything like this or heard any more camp. Uh, All right, lizards. Well, I don't know if you want to call it a camp, but uh, Chris, there's so many thugs out there. Yeah. And they everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they're going to steal, they're going to knock you out, they're going to take whatever they want to take. Well, I was just wondering, it, it was, you know, because I've seen them come in on the trains down there at Stasny. They're riding on the train coming in. You know, I'm always waving at them, you know. <laughs> and I see them, you know, roll off the trains down that area. But uh, anyways, I was just wondering, you know, with all this stuff, the caravan coming up, and, you know, this political hot topic, if you've heard anything. All right, I'm off and going. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that invasion. But, um... They actually turned around and they're heading back to Honduras. Are they? I think, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, because the Tijuana was through with Right, them. right. And then that actually came out. What I think is interesting about the homeless situation is that so many people, like, don't think it's, like, not their problem. But a lot of us, like, 
we live paycheck to paycheck. Right We're there. that close. And as property values go up, rents goes up. We're all basically yeah, looking at homeless. We're all yes. homeless people and it, walking. It just came out today that Austin was the second, it had the second highest growth in the country in cost of living for this year. Mm -hmm. yes. And it was obviously the first, um, the highest in Texas. So Austin just all around is yeah, a huge so issue. And, and, and I think that there's a lot of common ground on the right and the left on many of these issues. There, there are bipartisan efforts, I think, to, to have um, criminal justice reform and not oh, spend yeah. the money to lock up a lot of people who could be contributing to the economy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of being a, a burden. <coughs> the and I, I think that that the Republican Party here in Travis County couldn't agree more that the city council, I, I'm willing to give them uh, the benefit of the doubt on their intentions. I don't think that they are sitting down and saying, what can we do to make this a community that is less racially diverse? What can we right. do to run people of color out of Austin? But what they do is they set up housing regulations and other regulations that <coughs> end up with, with the, the fact on the ground is that people who can't buy a house that costs a million dollars are having to move out to places like Maynard and Hull, Leander, Leander and, and then they have to get in their cars and spend more money coming downtown to, to, to go to jobs and so that just makes the traffic worse. It just seems to me that the government has failed Austin at, at every level. I don't think the city council was in charge of widening I-35 sometime over the last 50 years, but somebody was in charge of it. And, and it just seems like a city ought to be livable. And from the point of view of traffic alone, oh, the, this city isn't I mean, isn't my commute alone definitely an hour and a half in the morning <laughs> to go from uh, 2222 22 to 360. But we're lucky. We, we have a place to lie down at night. That is we true. Have, we have vehicles. Um, yes. I, the, the question that I have for you as as someone who, who you know works with the homeless all the time is uh, just to, to, to take as much time as you need to talk about things that government and private citizens could do to make the situation better. I mean, I, I think Definitely. that a lot of times we, we spend that money. I mean, the money's being spent. There's no question about that. Um, and, 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 and it, 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 again, I'm, I'm willing to think that the city government has good intentions. They want to, to raise taxes to make Austin more affordable. That, that, <laughs> they want to build affordable housing by raising taxes and running more people out of town. Uh, but mm. programs that I, I should shut up. Is there anything that's being done that is moving <coughs> people out of situations where they are at the mercy of the of the homeless and, and getting them uh, back up on their feet again? Is there something that's working? Let me add one more to that. And our nonprofits that are in existence being effective and working with the homeless because we have, you know, Troxel and, you know, all those organizations, are those being effective? I don't think Troxel's doing anything but, like, legal aid and raising the minimum wage to 15, supposedly, mm -hmm. which wouldn't really get anybody a home. I think they said the medium income uh, would be $26 an hour if you're going to have a two-bedroom apartment presently, but in mm -hmm. a year that's going to change. You know, that's rent gets to 3000 a month. Um, I don't think... So I don't think we have a right-left issue. Um, I think we have a humanity issue. Uh, like I said before, I don't think we actually have a homeless issue. I think we have a greed issue. We have more than enough housing in our own homes. If y'all would uh, adopt a homeless person, I personally could use a place to live and an or and or an office space and maybe some storage. There are solutions that we could do without the government, without raising taxes, but we're too lazy and apathetic to do anything. We also, actually, the city of Austin, Tovos and Kitchens and people like that, they don't really feel that uh, it affects them. Uh, uh, Leffingwell told me none of the, nobody in his district cares about homelessness. I mean, they just really don't think that they're going to personally be affected until we're 
you know, and the stuff at the bottom, the guys at city council, most of them are probably millionaires. They probably aren't going to be affected. So why would they change anything? It's all working out just great for the downtown Austin Alliance, for the uh, drug dealing businesses that sell alcohol to people until they become homeless um, and um, disenfranchised. Um, we, um, I think that we could do things with the not with the the churches specifically because they have nonprofit status. You're, you're a charity, St. David's, Victory, uh, you name them. They all the big churches on 360. <clears throat> they actually have all that money and they're getting tax free money. Uh, they can do whatever they want and get it tax free. And they're the ones that we should go to first. The government itself has shown mismanagement. Um, they just passed a so. Adler and Tovo and some of the other ones didn't want to be audited under Proposition, Proposition K. I actually feel that we should not only audit them because they're definitely mismanaging, embezzling, and using malfeasance, which is a federal crime. I think that they actually need to audit Echo and Front Steps and Salvation Army and Caritas and audit them for accountability and transparency as well. Some of those institutions have been involved in uh, assaulting me personally and others. Um, Working with the police to hide crimes, sexual assaults, different kinds of assaults. Um, what we have is an underclass of citizen, like you would see in a caste-based system, like say in India, the untouchables. We have these untouchables, which I'm considered untouchable now, you know, because I'm I'm impoverished in this great grand city with all this money that spends like I forget 124 million on the library alone. Right. Um, so we have money, the trail of lights. I mean, there's just so much money we blow, and then we they turn around with the other side of their face and say we don't have money. We have a 4.1 billion dollar um, uh, general general budget, right? And yet we can't find the housing. And it's the other thing is affordable housing. Let's talk about. I know you brought up affordable housing. So affordable housing is not the word. That's the word they gave us. They always hijack our words. Affordable housing means when you need uh, what is it? A thousand. I forget what the number was. It's like a thousand Oracle employees for the new Oracle complex on, on Lakeshore Drive off River, East Riverside. They're going to demolish all those all those uh, low income houses. Low income housing. They've already demolished hundreds of low income housing units to put Oracle in there. Now they're going to go across Pleasant Valley, and you know about this. They're going to create the new domain of, of Riverside, and uh, they're going to make room for people that average over a hundred thousand dollars a year for <laughs> Oracle. And that's a whole master plan. This is done by Presidium and other groups, mm. and they're basic. This is what the plan is for Austin. There won't be a lot of um, low-income housing, and if there's no low-income housing, then they have to go to Manor and East and other places. And that's no longer low-income. <laughs> yeah. so I have a question. <laughs> this is a topic that I don't know a lot about, but I know y'all have heard about. There's like a homeless neighborhood or something. Mm -hmm. Because I know one of my friends attended a, a workshop about it or a presentation. Can you tell me more about what that is? You're talking about the mobile homes and prisons? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe first. Community first. <laughs> Maybe. Community first yeah. I was there on, on Saturday night, and, and I would like to get your I your don't even know what it actually, I just heard Maybe a little bit about it. it first. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll try. Yeah. I'll try. Because <laughs> I, I went there last year. Um, it, it was uh, uh, an initiative, really started by, by one man, and they were feeding people in the streets, and they said at some point, the problem here is not just that people are hungry, but they are homeless, and we believe that if we can give them a place to live every night to come home, then all the other services can come to them, and, and things start falling into place, and I think there's a, a lot of people who believe that, that uh, homelessness is 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 the first problem that you have to solve. So they what they did was to build hundreds of tiny tiny houses, not just tiny houses with small toilets and small kitchens, but houses with no toilets and no kitchens. And then there are to share with with a group of ten or, or fifteen of these people. There, there there's a there's a kitchen and and there's a, there's a, a shower bathhouse. And they, they, I'm sorry that we're not talking about this three weeks ago, because if you want to go see it, you can. And it's a lot of fun to go see it at Christmas, because they put up lights. So that Friday and Saturday last weekend, and Friday and Saturday the weekend before that, they had an open house. And um, it, it's it's very impressive. And are, uh -huh. are, who are you talking about who went to the seminar? Uh, Faith. Faith? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, there's there's a lot of interest How many on the right units? And among Republicans who were we, we know each other. We know Faith, who lives in Fort Worth, it's because she wanted to learn about how to do something how many similar units up there. Are there, there? Two hundred and fifty or or thereabouts. And how much I, did that cost? I I have no idea. Where's it located? Well, it's out east of town. Um, Northeast. Northeast. Decker, is that the yeah, name? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. Decker. And <coughs> I've been Oak there a couple Road. of times. Oh, what's the Hog, yeah, hog, hog mm-hmm. Tie Road? Or hog, hog Eye. Hog Eye. Yeah. It's, it on, it's on Hog Eye. Wow. And, I mean, it didn't cost any tax dollars. I think it cost a lot of money from people who, uh, somebody donated all the land, mm. and they donated the dollars necessary to clear the land, and they're, they're going to expand it. I think the problem is that, that that's... That's a program that seems to be working for 200 or 300 people. Mm-hmm. And we got a million people in Austin. And no question that the top 10 or 20 or 30 percent, they're okay. They're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. In fact, a lot of those people <coughs> seem to be really happy about taxes rising because yes, they got they so go. much money that, that you know they're not going to have to look at the prices on the menu next time they go to a restaurant just because their taxes went up by another they may thirty thousand dollars. It might just be a vacation. Home. It it might just be that a place too. they stay when they're in town. So they vote uh, overwhelmingly for those, but I know that you had wanted because I am interested to hear your opinion on that actually. Um, so how, how do they get out there? It's not like there's really so any there's city buses. Bus route close. They close. build the bus route closer. Uh, I'm not sure about the frequency. There, I've heard there is some walking on the street, which is unsafe with no shoulder. Yes. Um, I've had a couple of homeless friends uh, give me their lived experience there, and I've had some other people speculate on some of the numbers. I've heard that he's that Alan Graham uh, mobiles and fishes. Doesn't uh, offer any free rent. If you had a homeless solution, would you offer free rent, or would you charge the homeless five hundred dollars a month? Hmm. I, I think they are charging, right? So because it's basically they, they're trying to set them up with a an income, mm-hmm. and then charge. So they them. have to have an income going. In. They have a lot of qualifications. A lot <coughs> of qualifications. Well, with that many yeah. units, with that few units, I would assume they'd have to. And there's, I understand there's about 20 or 30 acres that's laying fallow that they've been uh, rolling. I've been watching Alan Graham roll. He had a mm-hmm. tiny one that was just like a, you know, it's like 10 units on a piece of property. And they showed that and got their funding and demolished that, which was homes. And that was on a different property. Now they've got this bigger property. Alamo Draft House and other investors have donated tens of millions of dollars. Tens of millions of dollars. And still we're charging the homeless rent. Um, I call it. A homeless petting zoo, like my friend called it. It's a homeless petting zoo. It's a dog and pony investor show, and it's mm-hmm. a good investment. People are like Echo and, and Mobiles and Fishes are making money off the homeless. Nonprofit doesn't mean you don't make a profit. It means you spend all your money on yourselves and, and your community, and, and so hopefully a lot of it's supposed to be charitable. But if you spend it on administration, you don't have to mm-hmm. show profit. So you can just show you. I'd like to, I would like to see them audited. I would like to see these companies audited that are profiting from the homeless. So um, I don't know if that's the solution. I think what I envision is like a shotgun effect where we have, number one, the homeless aren't allowed in a solution. So if you're talking about equity and, and, and governance and the types of things that we had the Tea Party over, we're having um, we're having solutions without representation. We're having representation without, without any say. And we're not even considered stakeholders. Stakeholders are the businesses and the nonprofits, but not the homeless that are going to be served. Is that how y'all would want to be served? I don't think anybody would want to be served that way. Right. Um, Echo is the coordinator for all of HUD funding in, in the county. So Echo is in charge. They have the city's master plan. They're probably going to be the ones that get the two hundred fifty million dollars from um, was it Proposition A? Which proposition was it? It was a was it for, a? for so, housing. Yeah, that got put through, mm-hmm. and oh, Echo will be in charge of most of that. So Echo is kingdom building right now, trying to hire and build and do everything they can to hold on to that money. And they have a lot of programs and a lot of nice talk, but who's going to audit them? Who's going to make sure that at the end of the day that the majority of the money goes to Permanently housing homeless and not putting people into temporary tents and solutions, halfway houses, place uh, uh, elderly places, places where they're you just it's, it's really short lived, and then you're back out in a month or two. And who wants to get evicted over and over and over? Uh, it traumatizes you. You get um, separation have, anxiety or whatever. 
ways to help them get a stable job, programs to help that, so Training. that they don't keep on. My, my, my two cents are that I have nothing to push back on you on what you said. It, it really is a little bit like a petting zoo because there's like busloads of people who look like me who come out there, and, and I don't have a homelessness problem very much. I, I uh, spent spent quite a few nights at the state park when I first moved to Austin. Uh -huh. Public uh, property. Yeah, that's yeah. public property. Um, but um, uh, I, I think it's I think it's probably a model that could help a few hundred people. I think they're going to go up to 1,200 people. And there's probably a, a person, a, a sort of profile of person who it helps, but it would, it, it's not going to make homelessness go away. Yeah, in Austin. it's not a solution. It's, it's not it's a, a solution. Before I forget, I want to thank you for your remarks about Proposition K. That was just simply a no-brainer mm -hmm. to ask the city to take this immense amount of money and have somebody from the outside just look at it. That's what you do. You have oversight. And that was one of the least honest opposition campaigns I've ever seen in my life. I can work with Democrats. I can work with liberals. I can work with people who think that we ought to raise taxes, but when they say that that Proposition K stands for Koch brothers and dark money, mm -hmm. just a big lie. Just let's call it what it is. <clears throat> it was a lie. I saw that dark money thing a lot, and I was actually really confused. Koch brothers? Koch I was, yeah, I was really confused. K for Koch brothers? What, Proposition H is for Hitler? I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do? So just that's, that's the stupidest, least honest argument I have ever Adler seen. Well, that was paper. on the signs. That was on, that was on all the signs that yeah. they put all over at the polling places. Interesting. So they killed that. So they they pulled down the curtain, and now they are in charge of the money, and, and oh, no yes. one's going to be looking over their and shoulders. He, and he did have some this. bragging statements after that had lost, you know, the votes. So that that was too bad, but but anyway, yeah, and and, and so Proposition A is is going to raise a lot of money, and mm -hmm. somebody's going to be paid that money. Mm -hmm. It's not they didn't raise money to pass it out to homeless people. But it would solve a lot of homelessness if you did without the people in the middle. And I told Ann Howard that last week. That said, if you just got out of the way and gave us the money, if I had a hundred thousand dollars, I wouldn't have a homeless problem. But they're going to suck that money up. And you'll you'll have a property tax problem. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, one of the things I want to mention, uh, when when he asked about, what, what someone asked about jobs, my thing is is that we don't need to give a hand out. I'm not looking to give a hand out. My thing is that if you if you want to live, you got to work. If you want to eat, you need to work. That's why so, I said, is there someone providing tools to help them? Um, Training and get them, right. help them get them a jobs job that you know will keep them stable. I bet, uh, I bet, uh, art, do, art does that too, don't they? Don't they have programs in there? They where... got something, but it's just a mess. Arch is probably not a good example. It's <laughs> I mean, a total I... mess of bed bugs and oppression well, and, yeah. and policing. It's just a mess. Um, I don't know if they have programs, but um, at the Mobiles and Fishes, but I do, I did work for them once. They, Alan Graham, you still owe me 20 bucks. Um, they pay about $5 an hour, just well below the minimum wage. Hello? I, mean, I just, they had me hauling pea gravel on the hard for less than 5 bucks an hour. Um, I think if you were really serious with your 20 or 30 million, Alan Graham, that you're sitting on in your bank, you would take that interest and pay people a living wage. Say about 25 bucks an hour. Um, but I would have to say that you are have giving a handout because you're spending that money on policing and courts. You are, you're working for policing of the homeless. You're giving handcuffs. You're, you're giving handcuffs instead of handouts. And that's not the solution. And, yeah, it's fiscally irresponsible and a socially irresponsible for our humanity. Uh, we have a human right to be free and migrate and be free. Well, my thing when you say that, and I understand what you're saying, but if I'm, when I, when I drive down the street and I see a homeless person, or am I supposed to call them another name? Call them citizens. Sit, okay. When I see you. a citizen out there on the street, and you're right, they're just like me. Like um, and I said to myself, do you choose to be out there? I know it, it, there's nothing easy all the time, you know. But don't get 
don't start manifesting on me if I'm not going to hand you my hard-earned dollar or whatever you you know you want. And I'm not about to support your smoking or your drinking habit. I'm not about to do that. And you can tell that that's a lot. And some of them are true. They're truthful when they hold oh, their yeah, signs I up. I need some beer. I need some cigarettes. Right. I'm sorry. I work just as hard as you. I get my big behind up every day and struggle and get on into work too. So come on. If, but if you're going to stand up there and hold that sign all day, you could have got your job somewhere. Maybe. There's a lot of obstructions. So if you have a criminal record, if you don't have a driver's license, please steal driver's license. Uh, that's been a thing. Mayor Adler knows that's whole crunk. So if you don't have an, I an ID, it's going to be hard to even get day labor. Um, so have you ever... Can I interrupt you? That's, yeah. that's a big deal. A because big it deal. keeps coming up on on election day, people say mm -hmm. some people don't have IDs. Mm -hmm. And and I say, I, I, I need to understand this. Because wh why is it hard to have an ID? Now you just told me. This is the first time I've heard yeah. this in my life. Mayor Adler knows this. So, so they stop you and they say, let me see your ID, and they just put it's it... It's even in worse than that. So our police, because we've made them um, society's dump truck driver, basically they go around, um, some of them, not all of them, some people have ethics and moral and morality, but uh, I, uh, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said, a moral man has a, uh, or a, 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 a good man has the moral obligation to disobey unjust laws. So they go on, they know that they're, that you can't be sleeping, you can't be doing this and that and the other, and so they go around and find people sleeping a lot of times. They take all your stuff, they kick you until you move along, they take all your stuff, put it in their trunk, and take it out to a dumpster somewhere. And that's theft. That's theft of person, it's a felony. You actually have a right to resist that with force, according to police officers, but everyone's too scared to even speak out and complain. Um, most people aren't going to tell you this. The mayor knows, and the city council knows, that the, that the citizens... And Troxel's done several, uh, Troxel and Homes Not Handcuffs done several surveys where this has been, you know, they've taken surveys of people and find out how many people have reported having their driver's license stolen, how many people have found that having their driver's license stolen was an impairment to finding jobs and finding housing and different things like that, services. Um, and we have a whole structure of, of people at, at Sunrise Community Church, with Pastor Mark, at Arch, at different places that help you get an ID back, which has, you have to have a birth certificate, you have to go a whole <laughs> long way. And then don't they have to have somewhere to mail it? Well, you can use those addresses. So they'll usually oh, okay. let you use your addresses for your services. But so the birth certificate could be a challenge. Yeah, it's going to be a real challenge. Like it's 45 uh, bucks, I know. Yeah. To begin with. And it's, a, it's not going to be like instant, right? It takes a bit of time, so there's some time out. Now, I would like to challenge you. I personally don't like that. Mm -hmm. And we work hard, right? I, I'm a gardener, so I work really hard. Um, and I know you said you work hard. But I don't think that you would ever stand there on the corner for subsistence for 5 or 10 15 $20 a day. I don't realize, I don't think you realize how hard that is psychologically to beg like that. I've tried to do it for like six or seven years, thought about doing it because I think it would be good for my soul, it would be good for my attitude, my ego. I haven't been able to do that. So standing on a corner is really hard. That's discouraging. It's really hard. That's um, discouraging. So I'm saying, why not get a job? Because they, a lot of people can't. A lot of people have other psychological and other issues. If they test, test bad, or you know, there's all sorts of things. Like maybe you smoked a joint, which you're going to go on 6th Street and see how much they enforce that in Austin. Or you can go to a reggae fest or... Uh, or Willie Nelson. Yeah, Willie, you can go anywhere. And so these things, but we, won't, we haven't figured out how to stop screening for that. And we let people have cocaine. It goes out of your body in like 48 hours. So you can have cocaine in your system, but just not pot for 40-something days. So there's lots of barriers. I think that um, the city has is working on some things. Uh, Sunrise Community Church is ground zero for the city's new project. Actually, I don't know who's running the project. Some private group. The city's on board. Where they're paying um, people experiencing homelessness, homelessness $15 an hour to do park cleanups. Get rid of invasive tree species like uh, Mandina and and uh, legustrum, pick up trash, different things like that, and they're paying them. And so there's other programs. Um, there's other, so I really think that we need to have uh, <clears throat> the two things that solve homelessness are opportunity, or actually solve all social issues, need, in my opinion. I might be wrong, you can argue with me on this. Education, mm -hmm. right? Education For sure. and opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of education if you not have opportunity? Now, 
I think that we can maybe do some trade things and add some of that in there, and that's good. But I also want to see, um, I want to see crowdfunding and um, and uh, or or entrepreneur support of entrepreneurs rather than and they've done this in Bangladesh and other countries where they uh, they take crowdfunding a micro like micro mm -hmm. and they, they give them the people and they don't tell them what to do with the money because everyone you know what you want to do for a living he knows what you, we all know what we want to do for a living we don't really need a lot of of help. We just need the money, the capital. So you can't really make something happen without capital. I can't make something happen without capital. What, what would an average citizen on the street do with money if somebody was to hand them? <coughs> um, you're talking about thousands of dollars? I don't know. And how much, I'm going to add on to that, so how much would the average citizen living on the street need um, per hour, to make per hour, do you think, to Live comfort eventually make it feel a little comfortable. I think 20-25 an hour um, consistently on a forty-hour work week. Um, the apartments are well over a thousand dollars. And I so barely make average, much more than that. Say, and I average work. working people don't don't I not in Austin know, anyway. Yeah, I, I'm looking for an apartment right now. Um, these are disenfranchised people, so we're at a, they're at a different level. You're trying to catch them up and get them up to where they can stand on their feet, to where they can be productive members. But, but another exactly. another big right. component of this whole issue mm -hmm. is, and, and I think you brought it up, is that people are going to have to want to participate mm -hmm. and get educated and get trained to move on forward. Some people do. No, okay, but that's what I'm saying. They Same have to. Not, well, they have to have that attitude in order. Some because, people do already. You know. So those will be your so, start. Right. And then when but, I see but other there's people, other people out. like you mentioned earlier. Right. There's other people that don't want to be part or yeah. don't. You know, they want to like they say they want to be free. They want to be able to sleep at the yeah. party. Yeah. So they don't want any help. Well, they probably from anybody. Are abused by the police, and they probably but, know but, that. But how do you identify that person? Um, they don't want help from anybody. They want to be free to be able to move and do, you know. Well, if they're free, then why do we need to identify them? Why do we need to track you? Do you want to be attracted to human? No, no, no. I'm saying out? that there's times that you have those same kind of individuals uh -huh. in the same mixture. Okay. You know, at times, you know, at food pantries that, yeah. you know, and things like this. And I've known people that are from, because homeless, well, you know, homelessness isn't a, a new you know, when mm -hmm. I was growing up, there were a lot of our people were homeless. And it was acceptable to be homeless it in was, those days. Right, but once we got more white people to become mm -hmm. homeless, uh oh, now we get nonprofits, now we get all this and all that. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I do want to ask one question. I know we're running late on time, but tell me this. Uh, you know, earlier this year, I, I read about um, a story in, in California where there was such an epidemic with the homeless when it came to um, hepatitis, hepatitis A, I believe. But what type of, what type of, uh, what's out there? What, what are y'all, what, what are these citizens dealing with when it comes to epidemic type of diseases and things that's being transferred from one to another? I mean, hepatitis is definitely out there. I don't know the differences in the different alphabets. I know that there are cures for hepatitis. So you can get doctor's cures for hepatitis. Uh, there's a series of shots you have to take. Um, but um, I think the some of the bigger problems are um, basically the same ones that took out the Indians. Alcohol and tobacco. Folks, the American experience. Uh, just take out the Indians. Uh, so... There's alcohol, tobacco, and fentanyl is a big problem, which is mm. across the United States. But I've seen people that the police have allowed uh, three people on the south side of the Manchaca area to be killed by the same person giving out fentanyl. What is that? It's oh. a opiate. It's a synthetic opiate patch, and if you go hardcore, if you like have cancer or something, you're not supposed to take the whole patch. Give the whole patch to somebody and put it on. They're probably gonna die. Is she good? Oh wow! And it's super hardcore, powerful. Uh, there's also a bunch of inhalants down around downtown. It's also on the east side and stuff. They call it K2. The K2 mm -hmm. was like so 10 years ago. <laughs> um, basically, as it was explained to me the other day by one of the uh, street people that's from basically the burner community, the Burning Man community, so they know a lot of chemicals and interactions with the brain. 
So they have, um, you know, ketamine, different things. But what they start, so you have cannabinoid receptors in your brain that respond to cannabis, uh, to THC. And what happened was the legislature and the police and the government basically outlawed, um, outlawed cannabis. So it's illegal to have cannabis in the state. And by doing that, they created a, a false underground market of, of pseudo marijuana, which is the synthetic marijuanas that are super dangerous. And now we've got a bigger problem. They created a problem. The drugs, sorry about the drug war, drugs war. Um, <laughs> so what happened is in the K2 and Spice days, which is like 10 years ago, I don't know how long, a long time ago. Um, they used cannabinoid, synthetic cannabinoids that would get in your brain, and they were the nice cannabinoids that were not as invasive and didn't have as many side effects. Well, because of the reformulation, change the law, reformulation, change the law, reform. Now we're at the chemicals that are dangerous, and the stuff on the streets is highly dangerous, mm -hmm. and it's not even the worst stuff. It's going to get worse. I don't know if I should even say this on, on live, on TV. If it's the truth, it's the truth. There's a thing called crocodile. Crocodile. Okay. It's from the Ukraine, and it's a flesh-eating drug. It can be made with common things made uh, at, at, out of Walgreens and stuff, the common things. And it eats, eats holes right through your arm. You can go look up a documentary from the Ukrainian man. And what I learned from that was it was really hard to watch. Hard to watch. Really hard. What you watch it concerns. Why? Why would someone use that? Because he doesn't care anymore, and nobody cares about him. He just doesn't care. So when oh, you have so like that self-esteem, yeah. So, so, so. Yes. Oh my so this is where we're at now because we have put the bloody boot of oppression upon people's necks. And now they're at the point where they just don't care. And it's the cheapest drug on the street. Mm. It's cheaper than alcohol. It's cheaper than marijuana. It's not going to test. They don't test for it. None of that K2 stuff is being tested. Who are the dealers? Um, Who are so these people that are selling? Uh, the police steal every drug imaginable in this town. Oh, they get they they confiscated and they sell. They use. The I drug. don't know what they're doing because it comes from China. A lot of it has Chinese U.S. custom stickers on it. It's coming through international channels. It seems to me so marijuana. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a festival. Some of them marijuana. They're probably not fighting. They're probably not. You know, they're just kind of chill. Like eating some bonbons or whatever. Eating some donuts. K two. If you think of yourself as a cop or the government. You come across someone on, on this K2 stuff, they're they're not able to talk. They're probably passed out and unconscious. You can do anything you want to them. So it seems like the perfect drug that the government would like to keep going. I mean, that is something else. That is something else. I mean, wow. Well, so you publicize your writings or whatever, or. Um, I publish in the Challenger Street newspaper on a Is that a small newspaper? How do you get how do you get access to uh, how do you get a, a copy of the Is it on the web? Um, I have some in my in my in my ride outside. But um yeah, they have different distributors around town. Um out in front of Whole Foods and uh, there's some there's a door to door distributor that goes door to door. Mm -hmm. Um we meet at the city hall every Sunday at one. If anybody wants to come to our meetings. Yeah. Um, we also meet at the Trinity Center on 7th and Trinity um, on Wednesdays at 1 also. So we have two meetings a week. I usually don't go to meetings because I'm kind of like anti-meeting myself. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I mostly do video. I do a lot of police interaction videos, uh, police telling people they can't lay down. We know that this is a contention. We're actually um, with Homes Not Handcuffed Coalition. It's the Austin Interfaith Group, uh, a bunch of other groups, the ACLU of Texas, a bunch of other groups are in our group, and we're trying to push the city council to repeal the no camping ordinance, the anti-solicitation ordinance, and the no sit, no lie down ordinance, because all of those are basically unconstitutional. Have y'all gone to Cap Metro to make them remove those benches? The, um, to have those the thing in the middle? Yeah. Um, it's on our radar, but we're uh, so home my handcuffs coalition, uh, working with grassroots leadership, we're more interested in legislation and policy than we are mm. in um, like architecture. So. Uh, you have to tell us about this picture. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a picture I did um, for art from the streets. Yeah. I'm in the art from the streets program. It's my third year as an artist. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, representative of uh, the gentrification of Austin, oh. home street home, just oh. like. Um, a bit abstract, and uh, my girlfriend really likes this one. She says it's her favorite piece, and it's probably going to be famous. But uh, I've got uh, lots of art. Lots of art. Yeah, Tell us excited. about your buddy there. Oh, hold on. Yeah. We only got three minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Real quick, bird. real quick. Where you can find him? How do you fall in love I with him? Her when she was like this big at uh, Zookeeper's Exotic Pet Stuff uh, Burnett. Where the bird came from. Who? Never mind. <laughs> Don't forget to vote. Tomorrow's election day for the city council. Oh, yes. Vote. District 8, Frank Ward. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you have not voted, get out there and vote. It's very important. It's been a very, very low turnout. Please, please, so turn out. We'll please decide. make time to get out there and vote, and it won't take you less than a minute to we vote. We need at least one conservative Once you get in, in the office city council. council. You have to have one. If you don't and, vote, at least revolt. And vote for <laughs> Frank, what's his last name? Ward. For Keep Frank Austin Ward, Ward. And for Susana <laughs> Almanza. <laughs> District 3. We need to know out of there. Uh, if you had a chance. Yeah, we got a couple of girls to come by and see us. We'll have to revisit. We'll have to yeah. do this again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Really. We, you know, get more yeah. information, get out more there, and we'll get out there with y'all and just see. And you take pictures and film and all that, we'll get out there with you. Because there's a one lady at my Hancock Center mm -hmm. right under the bridge. And she's there because I worked the election with Fiesta. And she's there every day, every day. And we asked, and they said that she loves. Being there under the bridge with blankets, and she don't want help from nobody. When she sees her friends get help, she yeah. changes her mind. It's more about that. And it's <laughs> like a yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know how these. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of help they provide. She don't want none, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you don't yeah. get a bed bug, uh, halfway out. We got a minute left, and yes, we will be yeah. back next week with uh, uh, a Christmas party. Lost Texas England. All right. Check them out. All right. Be my birthday as well. And they're going to bring my sister in law down, as I might need to bring my brother. But my sister and I passed on my birthday, which is the 17th. And so it's been two years now. And so my mom says to bring her sister down. I, I have no idea why, but. <laughs> anyway, of this, huh? I don't understand. Uh, Temple, uh, this, uh, next week will be our last show of the year. We'll be back in January. See you next week, folks. It'll all be good. Thank everybody for coming down. Yay! Go Cowboys! Go Cowboys!